Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. I've still got the limited technology available to me for this update, but for the next one, I promise that everything will be back to normal. Right, I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation here runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 29th. It's based on data from the GFS model. In the short term, it looks like we're going to have a late season blast of wintry conditions. To the north there over Scotland, there's some white shading showing up. That's pointing towards sleet or snow. And the reason for it is that much colder air is beginning to sweep southwards across the UK. So an Arctic blast as we head towards the end of March and into the early part of April is what is looking most likely. And that's what the animation shows. By Thursday, that cold Arctic air has pushed right down across all parts of the United Kingdom. There could even be some sleet or snow for a time in southern and central Britain. And as the weather from pulls away southwards, we're left with a mix of sunny spells and showers. Many of those will be wintry and snow falling to low levels at times. There could be some accumulations. I'll come on to that a little bit later. Through the days which follow, it remains cold. Showers continue, but gradually the really cold upper level air begins to be mixed out. Showers start to become more, uh, include rain more frequently, and the snow tends to become focused over higher ground. Then towards the end here, into the early part of next week, it's a changeable pattern which is beginning to return weather fronts moving in from the Atlantic, high pressure to the south or southwest may be having some influence at times, but temperatures would be recovering. Just to give an indication of the potency of the initial blast from the Arctic, here are forecast air temperatures at about 1500 metres above sea level, 18 GMT, Thursday the 31st of March widely around minus eight, minus nine Celsius over all areas. So even if this air mass was in place in January, it would be a cold one or even a very cold one by UK standards. Now, as I said, that really cold air does get mixed out through the course of the first week. The chart here is for Monday, April, uh, Monday the 4th of April. By then, values are around 2 Celsius in the north, just about minus 2 still in southern and central regions. But, but it is turning significantly less cold or milder by then. What that means for the temperatures down at the ground level, no surprise, there's going to be some widespread and sharp frosts by night. Just to illustrate, 06 GMT, Thursday the 31st of March. Forecast values from the UK Met Office, UKV model, minus 5 Celsius, minus 4 Celsius in the north and the west. Even in central and southeastern England, it's down to or just below freezing point. Daytime values, well, the sun is, of course, very strong at this time of year, but we're seeing maximums here on Friday around 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 Celsius, and it's really worth remembering that when showers come along, those values will tumble very, very quickly indeed. So it's likely to feel bitterly cold um, when the sun goes behind the clouds. Just one other point is that through Thursday and into Friday, it's likely to be very windy in the south, particularly in the English Channel. So that will exacerbate the chill and the cold feel in general. As I've been saying, though, it turns milder later on. So just to illustrate, here are the forecast values from the European ECM model. Midday on Tuesday, the 5th of April, 12s, 13s, 14 Celsius. So getting back to uh, the average for the early part of April. The MoGreps uh, two meter temperature ensemble really supports that general theme that I've been discussing in the short term. Values here for London take quite a sharp dip, so maximums on the uh, 31st and 1st around 6 or 7, 8 Celsius. 
Later on, though, there's an upwards trend which supports that transition back to less cold weather. And it's a similar story on the Glasgow plot, the cold plunge, then the recovery towards the end as we go through the first week of April. Rainfall. Well, the first five days here from the ECM and GFS models showing some rain in all parts of the UK. It's worth remembering, though, I'm talking about rainfall, but it's really been, this is showing precipitation and a significant amount of it through the first few days could well be sleet or snow. Going on to the 0 to 10 day charts, the totals have increased. I think it's really pointing towards a rather changeable theme developing once that initial cold uh, spell finishes and an Atlantic influence returning. The wettest conditions there in the northwest of the United Kingdom, which really supports that idea. So a cold blast is strongly favoured by the GFS model. model. MoGreps also indicates the same thing. Do the other deterministic models go for the same type of scenario at the end of week one, though, with the milder air beginning to come back? Just as a reminder, here is the GFS view. There is still a northwesterly tilt to the flow, so it's not going to be overly mild with high pressure uh, to the west of the southwest, but it is, it is a transition back to an Atlantic-based theme. The Canadian model, very similar at the same time. High pressure to the southwest, a ridge at least having some influence. German icon model, again, the same story. The European ECM, SNAP, and the UK Met Office, a fairly flat picture there with a southwesterly flow beginning to become established. So, so yes, there is good agreement there for the type of, uh, of pattern that looks like returning towards the end of the first week. What about week two? As ever, it's about trends and probabilities, not specifics. Taking a look at the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air temperatures on the top half. Well, most of the runs keep things above the 30-year average through the second week. So a big recovery after the initial cold plunge. The, uh, the thick purple line there, the ensemble mean, is staying above a thick black line, which is the 30-year norm throughout that second week of a forecast period. Precipitation across the bottom there. A number of spikes continue to show. It looks rather a wet picture. Risk of rain ongoing. And with a milder air, the chance of snow much, much reduced. The snow row maximum there is 3 out of 33 around the 9th or 10th of April. All in all, a much, much more typical uh, picture for the time of the year than during the first week of the forecast period. Going up to Glasgow, similar story, although upper air temperatures, uh, air mass temperatures here are remaining closer to the 30-year average through the second week. Some of the runs are dipping below it, some are above it. All in all, they are, as I say, Average now very much where you would expect them to be at this time of the year. Rain spikes across the bottom, but there are more of them, and they are taller than the ones on the London plot, indicating a wetter scenario in the northwest. Also, the snow row values there still reaching eight on the 7th of April, then dropping down a little bit to around three, four, or six, but a slightly higher chance of there being some wintriness in the northwest through the second week. I would suggest mostly over high ground, so the Scottish mountains, as is usually the case. The two-meter uh, data table, two-meter temperature data table for London, again, shows temperatures being close to or above the average through the second week, mostly yellows in the columns to begin with, 84 87%. Those are runs going for between 11 and 15 Celsius maximums. Later on, the amount of orange, which 
it, it goes up to about 39%. Vosa runs going for 16 to 20 Celsius. And it's always worth pointing out that GEFS tends to underestimate maximums by one or two Celsius. So a definite trend towards higher temperatures later on. In the northwest, Glasgow, it's mostly light greens early on, so maximums are 6 to 10 Celsius. But there is a fair amount of yellow showing up, 45% on Saturday the 9th, 42% on the 12th, for example. Those are the 11 to 15 Celsius run. So a, a closer to average pitch, I think, in the northwest. The mean surface level pressure data table um, here is for Glasgow. And what it shows is rather low pressure being dominant through the second week. A more typical pattern because the data tables for locations further south have generally higher values, which is pointing towards pressure being centered to the south, the southwest of UK, rather than the northwest as it is during the first few days. A positive North Atlantic oscillation uh, pattern therefore returning later on a fairly typical setup i think and that general idea is supported by the gefs mean surface level pressure plot for friday april the 8th there's a west to southwesterly flow over the uk um, pressure higher to the south fairly standard and the european ecm Ensemble backs that scenario up. Finally, the 10 to 15 day pressure anomaly chart. It's blue over UK, indicating lower than average pressure. And in turn, that points towards rather changeable theme continuing later on. The risk of rain, particularly great in the northwest doesn't look cold by this point and I think also with low of an average pressure and quite a mobile pattern showing its hand the chance of frost on any given night is going to be significantly reduced particularly in the south so to summarize the next two weeks week one it quickly turns much colder as Arctic air sweeps southwards. And there could be some sleet or snow even in southern and central Britain. I think accumulations, though, mostly in the north, particularly over high ground where 10, 15 centimetres is very possible. Having said that, there could be some short-term temporary accumulations even in southern counties. It's worth keeping an eye on just how things develop in the next day or two. Uh, frosts will be sharp and widespread. Values down to minus five, minus six Celsius, potentially in the north and the west of the UK in particular. But wintry showers generally in the north and the east, although they could really affect anywhere in the UK for a time. Later on, it turns milder and the risk of rain increases again as, as weather systems begin to move in from the Atlantic. Week two, a changeable theme, showers or longer spells of rain, wettest in the northwest, driest in the south, the southeast, temperatures close to average in the north and above it in the south. So there we have it, a late season blast of winter. It hasn't been that unusual in recent years. And as I say, look out for the possibility at least of sleet or snow, even in southern and central counties. But as I say, I think the disruptive accumulations are mostly going to be in the north and over high ground. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this forecast and found it useful. As I mentioned at the beginning, everything will be back to normal for the next update. So it's once more, I will be returning to the studio. But if you found this useful and enjoyed it, 
then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.